Welcome back to our Rise Exchange. President Obama calls it economic patriotism, and he is urging Congress to end a controversial practice that allows U.S. companies to relocate abroad and avoid paying billions of dollars in U.S. taxes. The White House estimates the tax loophole called inversion could cost the government as much as $17 billion in lost tax revenue over the next decade. With more on this corporate practice is Dan Mitchell. He is senior fellow at the Cato Institute, and he joins us from Washington, D.C. Dan, welcome to Arise Exchange. I'm glad to be on the program. So um, this does kind of feel unseemly, doesn't it, in the view of the American public that we're getting all of this news of American companies basically just reincorporating overseas. They're, they're not moving anything. I think we had a contributor on last week who said they're changing their address on their stationery. Uh, what is your view of that? I think corporate inversions are the only logical response to a tax code that puts American domiciled companies at a huge competitive disadvantage. We have the highest corporate tax rate in the world, higher than France, higher than Sweden, higher, higher than Japan. Mm -hmm. But then what makes it even worse is, unlike almost every country in the world, we tax on what's called a worldwide basis. So an American company that's trying to compete for market share in Europe, where the average corporate tax rate is 24 percent, not only has to pay those taxes in Europe, but then it has to declare that income on its U.S. tax return and then top up its taxes to the U.S. level. I mean, that puts an American company at a huge competitive disadvantage compared to, to the foreign companies that it's competing against. And remember, uh, they can't return money to shareholders either in the form of dividends because that creates yet another layer of taxation. Yeah, so, so worldwide taxation, in effect, is double taxation. That's sort of an easy way of thinking about it. So the rate's very high, and then the worldwide taxation means that unlike, again, unlike companies registered in other countries, there's that second layer of tax if you're competing abroad. And this is very, very bad for American companies but, uh, that, are, that are the ones creating jobs uh, here in America. And Dan, we could all argue for lower corporate tax rates, but the optics here are getting pretty ugly. Mark Cuban, the billionaire owner of the Dallas Mavericks, for example, today says Americans shouldn't invest in companies that do these type of strategies, in which case, frankly, there would probably be not a lot of companies to invest in. And he he says that the American public ends up paying higher taxes because corporations aren't paying their share. I think he's wrong on both counts. Doing a corporate inversion is good for shareholders, good for workers, good for consumers. It might not be good for politicians who want to spend more money, but frankly, that's way, way down to the bottom of my list of priorities. And in terms of whether or not the rest of us have to pay more, that's nonsense. Let's say that there's a restaurant in town that you think is overpriced, and you decide that you're going to go to other restaurants instead. Is that restaurant then going to raise its prices as it's losing consumers? No. They're going to lower their prices to try to win consumers back. This is the process called tax competition. And globalization has been very helpful around the world in convincing countries to lower their tax rates. The problem is the U.S. hasn't been in the race ever since the 1986 Tax Reform Act. We've been standing still while other countries are responding to this competitive pressure and doing the right thing. We need to get on the ball. I also feel, Dan, that this is really hurts small businesses because it's the large businesses that can afford to do this, right? It's anti-competitive of here in the United States as well. No, I, I don't no. think so, because don't forget, all that happens with a corporate inversion is that there's no longer a second layer of tax on what's called foreign source income. The inverted companies still, still pay, pay the American here. corporate tax rate on their U.S. source income, much like the small businesses that don't have overseas income. Uh, so, so, yeah, we still would have a problem inside America. The corporate tax rate is still high. But this is about enabling American companies to compete on a level playing field when they're competing for market share in Ireland so, and Switzerland. So China and elsewhere. President Obama has talked about tax reform here, and this is not entirely his fault. This tax level has been in place for quite a few years. So why can't we get the government to do something about this tax problem? Because we hear from everywhere, you know, we heard about a possible amnesty for repatriotizing some money that would bring a whole bunch of money back into this country. There seems to be completely frozen in Washington at doing something, and so the companies are fleeing. Here's the problem. The president has proposed to do something, but he's proposing to lower the corporate tax rate a little bit, but he wants to pay for it by increasing worldwide taxation a lot. So you're sort of just rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. What we need to do is 
do both. Move toward territorial taxation, like Japan, like the United Kingdom, like other countries have done recently, and we need to lower the corporate tax rate. The average corporate tax rate in Europe is less than 24%. It just baffles my mind that we are so far above Europe with a 35% federal rate and then add on about four points for state corporate yeah, I taxes. Think, I think most people would be surprised to learn that Europe has lower taxes than the United States on this issue. Dan Mitchell from the Cato Institute, thank you so much. Thank you.